Shanghai Marine Shake from the World Bank. We are live at the Innovate for Climate Finance and Markets Week. For those of you following online, please use hashtag Innovate for Climate. I'm excited to have a discussion here today with Jeff Schwartz, the Managing Director of the International Missions Training Association, AITA. So for those who don't know, could you just explain more about the organization and what you guys do? Sure, absolutely, and thank you for having me. So AITA is the world's largest association exclusively dedicated to carbon markets. So carbon markets have been around uh, for a long time, in fact, uh, since the 1980s, and AITA grew out of the Kyoto Protocol. Uh, at that time, in the Kyoto Protocol, there was a sincere need for businesses to come together and understand how they could work together and help shape the future of carbon markets, either through the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change or through carbon markets that governments have set up. Today, there are over 30 carbon markets around the world, and AIDA has a presence in each of them. We're an association of about 150 member companies. We represent all types of industries, uh, basically any kind of company who's active in carbon markets. So how are you guys working with businesses then, uh, you know, to prepare for the markets in the future? So most of our businesses are active in carbon markets. Either they have to buy emissions reductions to comply with the carbon regulation that they face in their country, or they provide a service. They either provide carbon credits to a company, or they are a law firm that can help companies, or they are a project developer who's generating the projects, or they're the companies who check that emissions reductions are actually taking place, or they might be an exchange where carbon reductions are bought and sold. So since we have around 150 of those companies and they've been working with us since 1999, they have a lot of experience. They have a lot of lessons that they've shared um, through working together in Europe or through the Kyoto Protocol or now under the Paris Agreement. And our members want to share those lessons with companies around the world who may soon be subject to some form of carbon pricing regulation. We believe it's absolutely essential that companies that are soon to be included in future carbon pricing regulations benefit from the lessons learned of companies that have already been participating in these systems. So there are companies in Europe and California and Australia and all parts of the world that have been participating in carbon pricing for many years. And we want to share those experiences so that companies in China or Mexico or South Africa can understand how you participate in carbon markets what works and what doesn't. Just to follow up on that, I mean, China is launching the largest emissions training scheme later this year. Yes. So what does that mean you know, for the future for the world as far as this happening? China is the biggest game in town when it comes to the future of carbon pricing. Let me be clear. When China adopts a national emissions trading system, it will cover around 5 billion tons of CO2. That's twice the size of the EU carbon market and 12 times the size of the California carbon market, which is the biggest carbon market in the United States. So this is huge, which is a major development. And AITA has been working in China for many years. We have a special initiative called the Business Partnership for Market Readiness. We do this alongside with the World Bank's Partnership for Market Readiness. And this is an initiative where we bring our members to places like China or Mexico or Kazakhstan, wherever a government is interested and hearing from business on how to be proactive and how to also share experience on carbon pricing. And that's what this business partnership for market readiness initiative is all about. And you guys are you know, a partnership with World Bank. You just launched um, the carbon markets from this guide. So yes. what is your you know, collaboration with World Bank? And can you tell us more about the guide? Sure. So we've been a longstanding partner of the World Bank group um, since our foundations, really, in, in the late 90s. And we work together with the World Bank on a number of fronts. Obviously, we, we cooperate a lot to produce events like here at Innovate for Climate. But what we've also done since uh, 2013 is we've worked together with the World Bank. So whenever the World Bank might be going into a country to help a country implement a new carbon pricing system, we are the voice of business, international business, that helps the World Bank make the case for carbon pricing in a number of different countries. And this carbon market readiness guide, which you can find on AIDA's homepage, is exactly that, what I was explaining earlier. It's sharing the lessons of how businesses have been participating in carbon markets since 1999. It's 
10 chapters, but they're very short. They're only a few pages each. Can you have some examples of kind of sure. lessons learned? So a lot of companies say, OK, now I have to participate in carbon pricing. What do I have to do to organize my company? Do I need to tell my lawyer? Does my CEO need to know about it? What about my accountants? How do my salespeople need to participate? So there are so many companies in the world who've already gone through that lesson. They've organized themselves so that they can comply with carbon pricing and carbon market regulation very smoothly um, so that they save costs and they save money. Another example is when you find yourself subject to having to participate in a carbon market or a carbon pricing system, you need to know when is the right time to buy and when is the right time to sell. You can lose and make a lot of money knowing how you interact with the market. So these are major, major companies, shareholder listed companies from around the world who've already gone through that process. And in this guide, you could learn all about how they've succeeded and how they've also had some challenges in participating in carbon pricing and carbon market regulation. That's great. So just lastly, kind of what do you think is needed next? Where do we go from here? So the world today is one in which each country is deciding its own fate when it comes to climate change. The Paris Agreement is what we call a bottom-up process, where countries are in control. And they're the ones who are going to decide how successful they are in the fight of climate change. But we know that we cannot act independently and alone in this effort. We have to come together. Because when countries cooperate, then we can collectively do more to reduce emissions and address global climate change. So the next step really is how countries can come together in the cooperation of carbon pricing. Because if more countries cooperate on carbon pricing and cooperate in creating a cooperative union, if you will, on carbon markets, then we can have more ambition in terms of government setting in place higher targets to reduce emissions. That, I think, is the future. We're not going to get to the two-degree world that we know we need to be in for the Paris Agreement if each country acts on its own. So that's the future. We have to go in that direction. Work together. Yes. And the World Bank knows a lot about this. They've recently published a report which says if countries come together on carbon pricing, they can save 30% more reductions by 2030 than if they act alone. And by 2050, that figure goes to 50%. And that's the figure in the World Bank's uh, state of carbon pricing report that it launched last year. So I think that's really the future. And AITA and the World Bank uh, believe in that future, and, and we're hoping to work with others to help make that happen. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. We just heard live from Jeff Schwartz, Manage, Managing Director of the International Emissions uh, Tr Trading Association. So thank you so much. Um, and so stay tuned later for more interviews throughout the day on Facebook.com slash Thank you. Thank you. Bye.